I have had and survived Gleason 9 prostate cancer. Please subscribe to our channel if you find this information useful. I am now 74, and 9 years post-treatment. Prostate cancer is a common type of cancer that affects the prostate, a small gland in the male reproductive system. It is the second most common cancer in men worldwide, with an estimated 1 in 6 men being diagnosed with prostate cancer in their lifetime. Vietnam veterans with prostate cancer are automatically presumed to have been exposed to Agent Orange and are entitled to VA benefits as I was. In this video, we will discuss the symptoms, diagnosis, treatment options, and coping strategies for living with prostate cancer. We will also provide information on support resources and the importance of early detection and screening. It's important to note that early detection and treatment can greatly improve the prognosis and survival rates for prostate cancer. Prostate cancer often has no symptoms in its early stages and sometimes may not show anything even in severe cases like mine. As it progresses, it can cause a variety of symptoms such as difficulty urinating, weak or interrupted flow of urine, blood in the urine or semen, and pain or discomfort in the pelvic area. Other symptoms may include erectile dysfunction, frequent urination, and pain during ejaculation. It's important to note that these symptoms can also be caused by other conditions, so it's crucial to see a healthcare professional for a proper diagnosis. The diagnostic process for prostate cancer typically begins with a prostate-specific antigen PSA, test. A simple blood test, which measures the level of PSA in the blood. Elevated PSA levels can be a sign of prostate cancer, but it's not a definitive diagnosis. A biopsy may be recommended if the PSA level is high or if there is an abnormality on a digital rectal exam. A biopsy is a procedure where small samples of tissue are taken from the prostate and examined under a microscope. It's important to discuss with your healthcare provider about your symptoms, risk factors, and the best diagnostic plan for you. Early detection is key for better treatment options and outcomes. When it comes to treating prostate cancer, there are several options available, each with its own set of benefits and risks. All these are developed into fully explained topics in our follow-up video. Surgery, such as a radical prostatectomy, involves removing the entire prostate gland and some surrounding tissue. This is typically recommended for men with later stage prostate cancer. Radiation therapy, including external beam radiation and brachytherapy, uses high energy beams to kill cancer cells. This is typically recommended for men with more advanced prostate cancer or those who are not candidates for surgery. Hormone therapy, which is also known as androgen deprivation therapy, lowers the levels of the male hormone testosterone in the body. This can slow or stop the growth of prostate cancer cells. This is typically recommended for men with advanced prostate cancer or for those who have a recurrence after initial treatment. Wait and watch, you have several different health problems already and recognize that your quality of life which may already be short will not likely be better with an intervention. It's important to discuss with your healthcare provider about the best treatment plan for you based on your individual case, your preferences and values and the stage and grade of your cancer. The score is determined by adding together the two most common patterns of cancer seen in the biopsy samples. In my case, the biopsy was done in the urologist's office. An anesthetic was given and being a big guy, I thought it would be fine. The reality, it was like being kicked in the behind by a donkey. It only was uncomfortable for a moment, but it felt like a very long moment. In my case, the most common pattern of cancer seen was grade 5 and the second most common pattern is grade 4. The Gleason score would be 9, 5 plus 4. A Gleason score of 9 is considered to be high-grade cancer. This score is used to help determine the stage and aggressiveness of cancer and to help guide treatment decisions. Being diagnosed with prostate cancer can be a difficult and overwhelming experience both emotionally and practically. It's important to take the time to process the diagnosis and to seek support from loved ones, friends, and healthcare professionals. Treatment for prostate cancer can cause a variety of side effects, including fatigue, impotence, and incontinence. In my case, my cancer was determined to be inoperable so I had been radiation therapy of 39 doses of radiation for 39 consecutive days. This was easy at first but I could feel it burning me inside toward the end. This treatment followed two months of androgen deprivation therapy to hopefully stop the tumor from growing and reduce it. I was immediately having bowel control issues and had almost no feeling in my penis. I was not able to feel my pee as it passed and it dribbled at first then dribbled after I put it away. 
I was asked to continue the deprivation therapy, but I found it so disruptive to my already disrupted new life I was only able to tolerate it for about 18 months before I stopped it. This required additional monitoring which I was happy to do. There was no information provided on restoring my penis and sex life, and I felt disconnected in many ways, in my relationship within my marriage. I did not know the importance of support groups, and I struggled to try to find my way in this new life. My wife Ellen was my support and my best nurse through this ordeal. We did not attempt to have sex in any way for about two years as my libido was nil and I was like a bear with a sore head. Not very approachable. My penis had shrunk and would no longer fill. Masturbation was very difficult as you have to have something to work with. As I began feeling better, I started trying everything I read about. Vacuum devices, electrostimulation, vacuum devices that also vibrated, compression rings, etc. But they all need something to work with. Some started working together which gave me some hope. Viagra at that time was $200 for 12 tablets so it was not something I could try as often as I felt I need to. It worked for some time but unfortunately, 100 milligrams does nothing for me now, so I am going for the injections. Fortunately for me, I worked for a medical firm before my diagnosis, for about a year traveling to different medical offices, providing instructions and over 2,500 injections, on prescription, to men and couples wanting to try this therapy. Who would have thought that I would be one needing that same therapy? Our sex lives have improved a lot. Not back to pre-prostate cancer but something to look forward to again and helped to put my scales all back into place. The radiation treatment left me with lesions in my bladder that bleed from time to time into my pee. A penis that dribbles and since I can't feel the wee. I don't know when it is finished. So often I am left with pants that I have dribbled in. I developed a workaround for it and try to only pee in my bathroom sink because it has a large, raised glass bowl. I can watch to see when it finally finishes. I try not to drink any fluids after 7.30pm to reduce the number of times that I must get to use the toilet. Sometimes the flow is great and sometimes it starts and stops over several minutes. My bowel because of the radiation burning has lost its elasticity in places and leaks making life somewhat difficult. Again I have found a workaround and do not eat certain foods that want to pass too quickly through the system. All this and I am to still alive and happy today. If I go out, which I rarely do, I have spare clothes in my car in case of an accident. You are so lucky that radiotherapy today is much different and improved. Techniques over the 9 years have been developed to reduce the problems that I was left with. Ellen's journey is her story but also one of finding your way and discovery but fortunately for us, we were able to get there together. We hope this helps you. Ellen and Michael Moriarty 2RNs